Hi. Everyone is after lunch. So we are going to walk you through today with about uh, hot plugs in virtual machines. My name is Eddie. I work for Red Hat uh, on, on a project called Covert. And this is Andrea. He's uh, also from Red Hat. He's working on a project called Livert. Uh, who knows? Anyone heard about Livert? Oh, everyone. You're famous. Anyone heard about Covert? Oh, so if you, if you know Covert, then you also know Kubernetes. So we are good. OK, so a little bit of uh, background and context. In the beginning, we just had a virtual machine, and life was really, really simple, right? We just had to manage that one. Then we had many virtual machines on many nodes, and it was getting difficult. So we invented management, and we had to manage a virtual machine and our projects um, that we already, maybe you know, it, like Overt and OpenStack that manages virtual machines and others. And then came the containers, which, which are a soft a virtual machine. So it's a lighter and nicer, and okay, you can run just application inside of them. And they, they, it had the same phenomenon there. We had a lot of containers, so we had to manage them as well. So then came the big players and invented Kubernetes. And Kubernetes started to manage pods, which are the lowest uh, entity there. And in the pods, they are, they are containing many containers, something like that. So you can, you can consider them as containers as well. So they, there was just a specific implementation. And then came Kubert and said, why, if we can manage the ecosystem of managing Kubernetes, very similar to the ecosystem of managing virtual machines. So let's put VMs in, in that ecosystem and put them in, the, in pods, which sounds ridiculous, and, uh, and combine them both. So we'll use uh, all the scheduling, all the nice uh, features of uh, manager, management that we had on pods and the ecosystem to do the same thing for VMs. So this is Kubert. And from then on, we will try to go into, into the hot plug thing. And, but first, we'll just expand it. In order for a, to define a virtual machine, uh, in, in Covert, we just define a manifest, which is like a specification. And the whole system creates for us the virtual machine inside the pod. Um, it is powered, as usual, I mean, uh, all the open stack and uh, and Overt in the past, and Covert as well, is, is implementing virtual machine also using Livert and Kimo, uh, because you already know what it means. Um, more or less, if you look at this uh, slide here, we have three levels of, uh, three levels of abstraction. So we have the manifest. This is the li uh, how Covert looks at the virtual machine. Then we have Livert, which manages the life cycle or an, and uh, it's an abstraction API to KMU. And we have KMU itself, which it's actually the application that emulates for us the virtual machine. This is how um, a manifest or virtual machine manifest looks like in Covert. I will not get into the details. It's just a, an example here. Um, it's declarative and that the whole, the whole point of what Kubernetes is. Um, so we got to the hot plug thing. So in, in previously, like if I take Ovid as an example, we had their uh, support for uh, hot plugs. Can anyone, do you know why we needed hot plugs in the first place? Anyone? Yes. For? for? No, not for. Why? Why do we even need it? Okay, but why, why is it useful for someone to just hot plug something in? Like in the middle of, like if you take a physical machine and put a PCI inside of it while it is running. 
Yes. So I think one of the uh, most use, um, use cases that someone wants to do a hot plug in general is to, in networking, for example, you just want to connect to some other network in, on the fly, or, or you want to change some network parameters that you cannot do it uh, outside the VM, like in the external network. Um, that's one option. Uh, or maybe you want to add more disks to, the, to your virtual machine and you don't, you, all of this operation that you want, you don't want to disturb the application that runs in your guest. You don't want to shut down the VM and then power it on again, so you want to do it on the fly. Um, it also allows you to scale things uh, later, like you could start with something small and then maybe you find out that you need more things, like more disks, more storage, so you want to hot plug things in to get these uh, features. This doesn't, uh, it's not limited to interfaces or disk, it can be CPUs, it can be anything. Um, so the, what are our challenges with hot plugs? Uh, there are a lot. <laughs> so it starts with, um, it starts with Kubernetes itself. So Kubernetes itself gives us, if we are talking about devices, like PCI devices, uh, for example, uh, I can, the easiest way, easiest one that I can give is SRV. So if I want to push in an SRV device inside, I need to first move it inside the pod, right? So the VM can consume it. So in, in Kubernetes, there is a device plugin a component that uh, allows us to, allows to, to specify a specific device and ask him to move it inside the pod so it can be consumed. Um, and we, in networking, for example, uh, we, there we also have another part. It's uh, the CNI. The CNI defines, goes into the pod and can, the pod ne network namespace and can configure it with all the needed uh, tweaks to, to have the interface of the network inside the pod and for it to access the node. Um, but uh, this is a Kubernetes uh, thing. Device plugin can be only done at, at the startup of the pod. You cannot do it in while it is, it is running. Like if, once the pod is already active, you cannot use the device plugin anymore. And the CNI recently, in the last, I think, half a year uh, or a year, uh, there is now, using Multus, we can automatically, I mean, we can hot plug things into the pod uh, while it is running. So this is a new thing, and, but it is hot plug. We have a way to overcome the device plugin problem, like with SRV, for example. In Kuvert, what we do is we unplug. We, I mean, we need migration. So we, when, when we do migration in Kuvert, the destination pod is created, uh, and we can do everything there. So the device plugin can work on the target node. So what we do with, uh, in Kuvert for, for uh, SRV, for example, we unplug everything in the source, all the SRV interfaces, devices, and plug them on the target afterwards. So it's, it's kind of workaround in this code plug using migration. Um, now the Kuvert challenge. Kuvert challenge, I'm not going to get into this mess here, but, uh, but it's, Kubert has a lot of components, and if you want to do one thing there, you will need to most likely synchronize them all. So, for example, here, uh, the request comes to a component called the Virt API, and from there it goes to the manifest, and Virt controllers reconcile this manifest and, and uh, ask the Virt handler to start doing some st uh, privileged stuff on the node itself. In the, for example, the Virt handler needs to go inside the the, vir the virt launcher that you see inside the pod and do the networking stuff. And then it reaches the virt launcher, which is the covert representative in the pod that does all kinds of things. And, and there, the, the continuation of our talk today, there the domain, it touches the domain configuration, it talks with livvirt in order to do whatever is needed. Uh, we are going to talk mainly on this, uh, this part here from now on. Um, Andrea will uh, will continue that. So, Ready? Oh, yes. Quick switch.
quick. It will not be quick probably. All right. <laughs> so, can you hear me fine? Yes, good. So, um, when it comes to hot plug at the liver level, uh, by the way, if you have any questions, uh, raise your hand. Um, we'll have time for questions later as well. So, the problem when it gets to liver, the problem with PCI hot plug is that it requires planning. Uh, this is the case for the Q35 machine type, which is the default in Qvert and the recommended one. Um, you cannot just uh, uh, hot plug devices uh, just willy nilly. You need to prepare for it in advance. So, the way that this works is that you have um, your machine, and so the, the part, like in, which one is it? The part, this part is the, we can consider part of the machine, and it cannot be anything here, cannot be hot plugged. So, you have your root bus. It's a PCI bus. It cannot be hot plugged. Uh, you can plug devices into it, but the devices will also be considered as integrated devices, and so you will not be able to hot plug them or hot unplug them. In order to have a uh, hot plug working, what you need to do is you need to add some additional uh, PCI controllers called root ports. You plug those into the root bus, and those cannot be hot unplugged or plugged, but the devices connected to them can. And at that point, you have hot plug, which is what you want. So here we have two devices that can be potentially unplugged at runtime. If you want to have the ability to expand your virtual machine later down the line, you just create as few spare ones, as many as you need, and uh, then you can do hot plug. When it comes to liver and how it uh, facilitates the, the hot plug on Q35, uh, it is by doing a bunch of stuff for you. So if you have this XML, which is a very simple XML that describes like a single network interface, you can take this and uh, provide it to Livvert, and Livvert will add uh, some other XML to it. All of the stuff in yellow is stuff that Livvert will add automatically. It's a bit complicated, so we're gonna go through it like step by step. So the, the first controller is a PCI, the root bus that we were talking about in blue. On top of that, you have one root port, and then you have your device. And so all of the stuff with address type, all of that is just information that Livver needs to record the relationship between the various devices and controllers, and so basically the, the vertical lines. So this uh, happens automatically. You provide the device, you get the PCI controllers. So that means that hot plug works. Easy, right? No, of course it's not the case. There is, there is a problem with this, uh, and uh, can anyone guess? Did anyone spot the problem? Amount of slots you can plug in. Go on. Right, close. So, is, yeah, right. I'm going to repeat the question. Uh, he said that there's a limited amount of slots that you can hot plug, that you can use for hot plug. Yes, it is correct. Like, more precisely, or like more to the point, is that liver can only automatically add PCI controllers for devices that it knows about. And the devices that you are going to hot plug, by definition, liver cannot know of, about ahead of time. So, it cannot automatically add the controllers for that. That's why I'm saying that you need planning. So the question is, uh, how do we solve this? How do we manage to convince Liver to give us all of this uh, PCI controller goodness without it knowing the devices in advance? The solution that we have come up with is that of using placeholder devices. So we'll have an example here. This is uh, a standard, like very simple uh, QVR virtual machine with just one single network interface. And this will result in uh, QVR generating this XML, which is like the same as we've seen before. QVR will also add another interface that is marked as a placeholder, like it's 
you can see here, placeholder, right? So when this definition uh, is fed into Livvert, the result is that Livvert will add a bunch of controllers, right? So resulting in this PCI topology. And you can see that there are two root ports because Livvert realizes that it needs room for two devices. At this point, we take this definition that Livvert has augmented with additional information and we remove the placeholder, but we don't touch any of the PCI controllers. So now we have one empty slot, which is the goal that we had in mind. So this virtual machine can now be booted and uh, it has room for plugging in one device at runtime. We have decided that four is the magic number. Like you're gonna get four. Um, there is no particular meaning behind this number. It's just a small number that we feel will be useful to people um, without being overwhelming and we can change it later. So for now it's four. This is the, what we have implemented today in Qvert. Um, before going with this route, we went through a number of approaches that we consider and ultimately uh, decided not to follow. So the first one was to ask the user to manage the controllers explicitly, which is what Livvert users have to do. Um, that is fine for Livvert where you need to have very um, very detailed control of the PCI topology of your virtual machine, but Qvert is a much higher level tool, and so we didn't feel like it would be, it would be asking too much of users. Users of Qvert uh, should just be concerned about how many network devices they want, not whether those are going to be plugged in whatever kind of controller and all of the requirements that come with it. So we rejected this uh, idea pretty quickly. Another approach that we consider is the use of the PCI bridge controller, uh, which is a PCI controller that looks a bit like the root port, but it has a number of slots in it, and all of them are capable hot of hot plug. So in, it sounds like it would be a great solution for this problem. Um, however, uh, the slots on a PCI bridge are not PCI Express. They're conventional PCI, and uh, Libvert will not use them by default on a Q35 machine type. You can convince Libvert to use them, uh, but it basically requires you allocating all of the addresses uh, manually. So Qvert would have to get into the business of picking the PCI addresses for all of the devices, which is extremely complicated. Uh, Qvert, understandably, doesn't want to get into the business of doing that when uh, Libvert is uh, already, already has all of this logic implemented. Um, so, and then plus the devices would not show up as PCI Express inside the guest. So there's a number of drawbacks. We rejected this option as well. Another option that we consider was to, instead of just saying four, just to making, uh, allowing the user to specify spe uh, exactly how many placeholder they wanted to have. Uh, this is actually what we implemented at first and then we decided that most users would not have to worry about this. We didn't want them to need to worry about it. So we scrapped the interface and just hard-coded four. This is up for debate. Maybe we will change our minds. We will see. In terms of future work, um, this has been merged, as I mentioned. So this works today in Qvert. One thing that we could do in the future is to make this general concept of using placeholder devices to create um, PCI slots for hot plug um, could be extended to other kinds of PCI devices. The first example that comes to mind is disks, is the most obvious one. Uh, today, Qvert implements hot plug for disks. The way they do it is through the use of the Virtio PCI, uh, sorry, Virtio SCSI controller, which works fine. Uh, but there are some drawbacks to it, as well as some advantages, so it's kind of a toss-up. Um, thank you. Um, so maybe we could have um, this extended to disks and make it possible for the user to choose to use Virtio Block instead of Virtio SCSI. It's interesting, we will explore it and see what comes out of it. 
Another idea is to use a much larger number of PCI slots, like 32, to sort of match what uh, you would get um, out of the box on the PC machine type. Um, this sounds like a good idea. There are, however, some drawbacks in terms of uh, resource usage. Um, every time you add um, a PCI controller to your virtual machine, you affect negatively the memory usage, uh, the boot time for the guest operating system, so maybe four is enough and 32 would be too much, but maybe the overhead is not big enough that it matters in the context of KubeVirt, and uh, like a number like 32 would give enough headroom that most people will never have to worry about it uh, while not having such a big impact in, on performance, so it could be a good development. Again, we're gonna explore this and see what comes out of it. And this is the end of the presentation, so any questions? So the question is about memory ballooning. Memory ballooning is a, a completely different topic uh, because the memory balloon is a PCI device, but it's a device that you provide to the virtual machine and then the ballooning doesn't happen through plugging in and uh, plugging out PCI devices. You just inflate and deflate the balloon. So once you can create the balloon when the machine, when you define the machine, and it will just be there throughout the lifetime of the virtual machine uh, as you inflate it and deflate it. So you have to do zero of these shenanigans. Yes, please. Can you change the number of PCI slots by using the migration? So the question is, can you change the number of PCI slots uh, when you do migrations? Um, not as implemented today, theoretically, you could do it. You could have um, um, migration hook that changes the, but then you get pretty deep into the inner workings of PCI topology and uh, you get a very low level. So you're basically on your own, kind of, <laughs> but you can do it. Question, uh, is it a limitation of QVert or LiveVert? This is uh, a limitation, I believe, of the PCI spec. You cannot hot plug uh, root ports at the QMU level, and as far as I understand, this is because of the way PCI works. The number of PCI controllers is detected by the guest operating system at boot time, and uh, once you are inside the guest operating system, it is capable of detecting that new devices are attached to a con an existing controller, but it cannot figure out that there is a new controller coming in. So PCI spec, as far as I, I could be wrong about this. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it is correct. What about CPU hot plug? What about CPU hot plug? Again, like ballooning, Completely different topic, because the CPUs are not handled by plugging in PCI devices. Um, there is, we are aware of some work that is happening, right, uh, with regards to enabling CPU hot plug in uh, KubeVert. So we know that it's happening, but neither of us knows the details. So <laughs> I'm sorry, but you can, you can search, probably find the open merge request or pull request, or maybe it's been merged already. I don't know. It's merged. Okay, okay, so CPU hot plug is a thing, just not this thing. <laughs> yes? Uh, what about making the PCI bridge PCI Express compliant? What about making the PCI bridge PCI Express compliant? I think that was raised at some point as a why don't we do that? I don't know the answer. Uh, there are various PCI controllers um, I think that, okay, I'm probably misremembering details, but the, I think the idea behind all of that was that 
PCI, the conventional PCI and PCI Express, although they share most of their name, are actually extremely different technologies. And so PCI is like a bus-based topology, whereas PCI Express is a like point-to-point -point topology, um, technology, okay? And so what you would get by having a PCI bridge that is PCI Express, it would ultimately be 32 PCI root ports in a row and nothing more than that. So in that sense, this idea would be the idea of having 32 PCI root port in every virtual machine instead of four, right? So in a sense, we're considering it. <laughs> it's just different controller. Yes. So the question is whether these limitations are inherent to QVert or since they are in LibVert, they are shared by any virtualization uh, option built on, uh, on LibVert. And the answer is yes. They are shared by any virtualization solution built on LibVert and QMU. And uh, again, I think anything that uses PCI uh, has this limitation because it's not really an implementation problem in LiveVert or in QM. In LiveVert, we are exposing the limitation in QMU, and my understanding is that QMU is simply complying with the limitations of the spec. So as long as you're still on PCI, this is what you have to deal with. You got to plan ahead of time. I think there was a question there. Yeah. The question is, how do you plug a new volume inside a running pod? And I'm not the good person to answer that, so I will pass it over to Ed. And not even Ed, so apologies. Like, he's a network guy, mostly. Yeah, so we know it's possible to do it. We just don't know the details of it. Like, I, I, can, I can, I know a bit how it works at the liver level, but not at the pot level. I'm sorry. So the c comment from Ed is that it's challenging. There's no other question. No? You want me? No, I just, uh, maybe you will try. Right. Right. So basically, as I was mentioning earlier, with uh, with the PCI controllers, there's there's an escape hatch for all of this stuff in Qver. You can uh, you can expose a domain. Uh, it's a migration hook. Is that for migration? It's just a sidecar. So you can you can do sort of arbitrary transformation to the livered XML, inject your own custom things. Uh, of course, done. You if you break something, you get to keep all of the pieces. Uh, so ideally, you will not need to do it, but the option is there in case you have no other options. All right, I think we might be good unless, last call. Any last minute questions? No, okay, then, uh, then thank you.